You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. and welcome to Erie Community College, the site of this afternoon's New York State CHSAA Class A Championship between the host Canisius Crusaders and the visiting Fordham Prep Rams. My name is Alex Brasky alongside coach Tony Pulverenti from Cardinal O'Hara High School here in Buffalo, New York for the Varsity Media Sports Network. Excited to take you through the action between the Crusaders and the Rams. And 
We'll tell you a little bit about both teams before we get started here. The Crusaders coming to this game at 22 and five. Winners of their last 14 games. A 12 and 0 league record this season for the Crusaders, averaging 66 points per game and just a touch under 54 points per game. While the Rams, 22 and four, 16 and two within their league this season. They've won nine straight. They average 61 points per game and they allow 50 points per game. Leading score for the Rams, Omari Ward, a guard averaging 14 and a half points per game. And Canisius is leading score, a big Declan Ryan putting in 20.4 points per contest. So once again, Alex Brasky and coach Tony Polverenti here with you at Erie Community College, the site of tonight's New York State CHSAA Class A Championship game. It's Fordham and Canisius. Before we get to coach's thoughts, we'll tell you a little bit about the impact player for each team. And beginning with Omari Ward for the Fordham Prep Rams. He's had a heck of a career for the Rams. Two-time champion is Ward. A uniform issue this afternoon. He'll wear number 22 instead of his usual number two. So it's a little change here this afternoon at ECC. The Class A MVP for the New York City Catholic League. And he was a point guard for Fordham Prep's 2020 City Championship team. On Canisius' side, Declan Ryan, a senior forward. Like I said, averaging 20 and a half points per game, nine rebounds for Ryan. He can really do it all, shoot it from all over the floor. And Coach Pulverenti, you've seen Ryan up close. You can tell us a lot more about what he can do to hurt Fordham here this afternoon than I can. Why don't you give us your perspective on what makes Declan Ryan such a threat offensively as well as defensively for Coach Kyle Husband and the Crusaders? Offensively, he's a very fundamentally sound player. Uh, he knows his strengths, he knows his weaknesses, he doesn't try to do too much. And uh, as you mentioned, he can hurt hurt them on the inside, he can hurt them on the outside. And um, you know, that's gonna be Fordham's biggest task today is trying to control him on both ends of the court. Now on the other side, Ward. What, what have you seen from him in your, in your studies leading up to this game? I know you haven't seen him much this season, but from what you've seen from him on tape, what can Ward do that might make it difficult for the Crusaders here tonight? He seems to control the full offense for Fordham, and um, as he goes, they go. And we saw that versus Nazareth in the city championship to get to this game. Uh, once his offense started coming, Fordham was able to pull away. So that'll be Canisius's key, from my point of view, is trying to control him and keep the ball out of his hands as much as they can. All right, we're getting set for action here at ECC. About a minute left in warm-ups. The national anthem to come, starting lineups for each side. And we'll tell you a little bit about the coaches as we await the national anthem here. On Kinesia's side, we have Kyle Husband in his 18th season as head coach of the Crusaders boys basketball program. Was previously a program assistant, a Kinesia's grad. Class of 1996 was Coach Husband. And Coach, you've had an up-close look at Coach Husband's career. What makes him such a great coach? Well, he's the face of Canisius, graduate, like you mentioned, 1996. He's been with the program a long time. And uh, his teams are always known to get after it defensively. And that's where their toughness comes from. Now on the other side, we have Coach Brian Downey, also an alum of the program he's leading as head coach. 1995 graduate of Fordham Prep. In his eighth season as head coach, a former assistant from 1995 to 2003, took over as the JV coach from 02 to 03, then moved to All Hollows as a varsity assistant from 03 to 2014 before he took his first head coaching job with his alma mater. Coach Downey is also a New York City firefighter, and he's been serving the New York City Fire Department for the past 18 years. So we honor America here at ECC. We pause for the national anthem on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Thank you. Please remain standing as we honor America and all those who protect us here all and abroad from the flag of our national anthem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you heard it there during the anthem, fans here at ECC getting ready to explode with excitement. Big game here in Buffalo. The New York State CHSAA Class A Championship. Fordham Prep and Canisius getting ready to lock horns here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Before we get to tonight's action, here are the starting lineups for each side, beginning with the visiting Rams, as you see Amari Ward being introduced first. You also have Tommy Wingland, a guard for this Rams team. Also, Jake Trazzi, a senior forward. Jameer Harris, a junior forward. And Nate Botang, a senior forward. So, Botang listed at 6'6", and Trazzi at 6'2", Harris at 6'3", so no shortage of size here for the Rams. Right, I think that'll um, help contest and compete with Canisius, who's known to have size themselves. And that size led by Declan Ryan, of course, a senior forward listed at six foot seven. can really do it all, shoot it from all over the floor, as well as score inside. He's a senior. They also have 6'5", senior forward Eddie Cosgrove, as you see Shane Sarconi introduced. He also has plenty of length, six foot four, junior guard, a captain for this Crusaders team. Connor Schuster, a 5'11 guard, another captain will get the start and rounding out the Crusaders starting lineup. Luke Ronto, a junior guard listed at 6'1". So coach, a few final thoughts here. You can hear the excitement. It really should be a great game here at ECC. Definitely, and both teams got here the same way by playing defense and rebounding. It sounds cliche, but we preach to our guys, and I'm sure every coach does defense wins championships. They both got here in low-scoring games, games they had to grind out and really lock in defensively at the end, so I'm looking forward to this. I'll tell you how each team got here. Canisius, a win over number five, St. Mary's, who we saw playing the game prior to this matchup in the Class B state title game. That win over St. Mary's came by a final score of 83 to 48. And then the Crusaders followed that up with a 72 to 40 victory over Bishop Time in St. Jude in the Manhattan Cup Championship game. And then a win over Holy Trinity, 53 to 45 in the New York State CHSAA Class A semifinal. And he just started that game trailing eight to nothing, but came back and wound up moving on to this, the state championship game. Fordham, they defeated number eight, All Hollows, 73 to 36. Number four, St. Joe's by the Sea, 66 to 55. And then number two, Nazareth, 42 to 38 to take the city championship. Fordham began that game against Nazareth, trailing 10 to nothing until a quarter, corner jumper, excuse me, from Ward with about four minutes to go in the first quarter ignited a Rams comeback. So both teams battle tested, both teams set to go. We're ready to go here at ECC. Ryan and Botang meet at center court. Ball is up. The Class A state championship game is underway. Fordham comes away with the opening possession. Here you see Whalen with it on the far wing. He's really a tough player for this Fordham team. There's a miscommunication on the near side between Harrison and Trazi in an early turnover. Great first defensive possession for Canisius. And that's what a good defensive team can do to teams. They can just get you out of sorts, and you saw it there with the Rams. Crusaders, their first possession of this state championship game. Three ball, no good, off the mark from Luke Gronto, rebound. Goes to Tommy Whalen. As we said, Whalen, a tough player, can really do it all for this Fordham team. He can shoot it, but he really loves to get to the basket. That's where he really flourishes his Botang off the mark. Harris on the putback. And Fordham prep on the board. A minute into this Class A championship game, the Rams with a 2-0 lead. Harris did a lot of that versus Nazareth. He had 14 rebounds to help him get that victory. Backdoor cut. Kicked away by the Rams. Crusaders will take it underneath. Had he play there from Circone. What a nice defensive play. As you see, the inside finish from Harris here on the putback. Able to tip it to himself. 
and get the finish on the second try. So here's Canisius looking for its first points of the game, and that one thrown out of bounds. So a little, few errant passes here in the early going, perhaps some early game jitters for both sides. That's what it looks like. So coach, you're no stranger to this round of the postseason, a state champion in your own right with Cardinal O'Hara, the Class B level in 2019. What, what are some of the emotions going through these teams and these players, these communities, these coaches in preparation for this game? What are they thinking about and, and what are some of the things that are going through their minds as, as they go through this, this big atmosphere here? Just trying to keep them focused. You know, a lot of guys are nervous or anxious and uh, just trying to keep a focus on this is another basketball game and a lot of importance to it, but, you know, we're just playing basketball. And it's certainly difficult to narrow it down to just another game as the Canisius student section has came out in droves to support their Crusaders as Ward off the mark inside. Crusaders on the run now inside. So Tony gets Canisius on the board. Canisius does very well in transition. You just saw it there. They can really put it up in bunches. A close game against Holy Trinity in their semifinal matchup. Trailed early in that game, really turned on the Jets to begin the second half as Whalen inside. No good, Eddie Cosgrove on the rebound. But this Canisius team, as well as this Fordham team, can really score it in bunches as you see Declan Ryan get in the score column. And Canisius with, it, with its first advantage of the game. He's almost automatic that close. Ryan set to attend Wooster Academy Prep School next season. Really a handful to guard all over the floor. A high skill level, can score it inside and can shoot the three as well. But he's also a great passer. And when you have a big inside that can pass it like Ryan can, that really just opens up the full efficacy of your offense. Hard to guard a team with a big guy who could pass the ball. Cosgrove as well. They really do a work a nice high low game, high post and low post. And when you see them finding each other in there, that's really what takes this Crusaders offense to the next level. It'll definitely open up shots for Schuster, Granto, Zirconi. Ryan showing off here in the early going with a fadeaway jumper. Four point lead for the Crusaders. 4-10 remaining here in the first quarter. Let's see if Ford and Prep can get their offense going here. And we saw a slow go for them against Nazareth. We you see Boateng take it to the rack. Love's going left. Nisha's going quickly the other way. Cosgrove heaves up a three all the way around the rim and out. Ward looking to push the pace now for the Rams. He gets into the lane, but turned away. Nice defense there provided by Granto. Luke Granto, point guard for this Canisius team. Coach Husband says he's probably playing out of position as the team's point guard, but boy, he's done a heck of a job at that position this year. Ryan inside, no good. So Coney tried to put back. He couldn't get the follow, and Sir Coney will head to the line. Sir Coney's been big on the board so far today. He led him in rebounding in the champ in the semifinals. And um, that's one thing Canisius does well. Offensive rebounding, extra possessions, and now Shane's at the free throw line. Zirconi makes the first. Junior guard already fielding Division I offers from Albany and Fairfield, a big, strong, athletic player. He'll really take it to the basket with no fear. You saw it in that game against Holy Trinity. He was turned away a few times in the early going as he makes the second free throw there. But that didn't... He didn't stray from the basket after a few missed opportunities early. He kept coming at you, coming at you, and that's really what Zirconi does. And on the other end, Whalen does that as well, but that time turned away by Cosgrove. Two-step finish from Zirconi. Canisius again in transition. Canisius has it going, like Coach said. If they get running in transition, they really can make it difficult on opponents. Wayland to the rim, and he's fouled. 
As you see here, through the contacts, there's Coney able to get the finish and give Canisius a six point lead. Fordham will look to cut into this deficit here. Whalen, an all league selection, the New York City Catholic League, as he takes it to the basket. Beautiful finish from Whalen there. One thing you see from Fordham prep early, they like trying to drive to the basket. The unfortunate part is Canisius' help side defense is, is second to none. That's what Waylon loves to do. He loves to get to the basket. Doesn't stray away from shooting the three, but he's a slasher at heart. And just an all-around gritty player. Leads the team and charges taken as Cosgrove inside. No good. Strong rebound from Botang as he went up above the rim to grab that. Ward's got to get going here. Botang inside. Patience and the finish. Nice patience in there. Gets Cosgrove off his feet. Goes to the other side and gets the left-handed finish. So inside two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Fordham prep a little mini spurt here as they've cut it to two. Good ball game here at ECC on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Zirconi stops, pops. And Canisius back up to a four-point lead. He's scoring at all levels right now. Good first quarter for Shane. So as Coach said, Ward really the engine for this Fordham prep offense, but he's going to have a tough day against Gronto. Great defender and communicator for Canisius. He can also make open shots when you need him to, but he hangs his hat on defense. Ryan inside with the finish. Fordham prep letting him get way too close to the basket. He's not going to... He's not going to miss those ones. So here's Ward. Like I said, the MVP for that CHSAA Class A championship win over Nazareth. He's developed his three-point game, has Ward, as Whalen again to the rim. And that might be a mismatch that Fordham is looking to exploit. The athleticism from Whalen, not many matchups for that. No, and he did the same thing versus Nazareth last week. So as I was saying with Ward, he's really developed a perimeter shooting game, and so Coney gets his perimeter shooting game going. Seven point lead for the Crusaders inside 30 seconds remaining. Here in the first, Fordham Prep looking for its MVP to perhaps take things over as we saw late in that first quarter, first half against Nazareth. Little handoff here from Charlie O'Sullivan, a sub on for this Fordham prep team. Ward to the basket, a lot of contact, no call, knifing through defenders. And he couldn't get the finish. Jumper from the volleyball line, no good. And we head to the first quarter break. Seven point lead for Canisius. Alex Brasky and coach Tony Polverenti with you here on the Varsity Media Sports Network as Zirconi takes us to a quick break. Woodland's go! Ryan Woodland! Behind the back shot for Connolly, and that one is true to form. Comes a cut by Taylor, and that time she doesn't miss. Look at a cut to the cage, and a sidearm shot and goal by Emma DeMarco. Looking up top again, Lachinsky seeing it all the way to the save, rebounded out ahead for Almachi. Spinning and firing, and what a response there. All right, we're back here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. New York State CHSAA Class A Championship game. Alex Brasky, Tony Pulverenti with you here at ECC in Buffalo, New York. Snowy day here in Buffalo, but it's warm in the gym and things are heating up as Canisius holds a seven point lead over Fordham Prep in the early going. As Declan Ryan has found his way into the scoring column, but it's really been Shane Sircone inside with the finish. And a little pronunciation change there, Coach, as we had a little confusion on that to begin the game. I'll take responsibility for that. But Shane Sircone, what a game he's had in the early going here. Him and Declan have been unbelievable to start this game. Nine-point lead for Canisius. 
Fordham Prep looking to get a spark from Waylon, a foul inside. And that's going to send Waylon to the line. He's been one of the sparks for Fordham Prep here in the early going, along with Bo Tang. But Canisius has done a good job on Ward here. As Waylon to the line for two shots. Waylon can't get the shooter's roll as that miss perhaps aided by the lively Canisius student section to our right here. Just beneath the track at ECC, the Burt Flickinger Athletic Center on Oak Street here in Buffalo. Waylon 0 for 2. And when it's going bad, it's going bad. Got to make those free throws in these type of games, especially from a senior like Waylon. Ryan looking for a position inside, but Harris doing a nice job fronting the post. Able to get in front now is Ryan. Tried the left-handed scoop, no good. Ball rolling around, out of bounds. Off of Fordham Prep, Canisius will keep it. Canisius gaining several extra possessions here in the first half by battling on the offensive glass. Harris not giving Ryan any room to breathe, but able to break away and knock down the elbow jumper. Declan Ryan has his shooting stroke here in the first half. Ward's got to look to get going here. I know he's started slow versus Natheris as well, but team down 11 now. It sounds like we're beating a dead horse, but that's how important Ward is for this Florida prep team, as you saw him slash his way to the rim and finish to cut it to nine. But not only is he one of their top scorers, he's one of their top distributors, and just an energy guy. So when he gets going, distributing and scoring, it's really contagious for this Rams team. Hopefully that's what they need right there to get him going. Bronto. Three ball! Crusader! Hot from the perimeter. 12 point lead for Kinesia. 6.20 remaining here in the second quarter. It's getting late early for the Rams. Botang will try a three. Long rebound. Goes to Lucas Ingrando, a senior guard. He's come on as a sub for the Crusaders. Ingrando dumped it into Ryan, into the corner. Three ball, Vinny Conroy! Another substitute for the Crusaders. He knocks it down. Timeout, Fordham. Coach Brian Downey senses this one slipping away early. A 15 point lead for Canisius. 5.55 remaining in the second quarter. Coach. What a start for the Crusaders here this afternoon. Couldn't have asked for a better start. See, you see right there how getting the ball down to Declan Ryan opens up the outside shots for the Crusaders. And you knew for Canisius, defense was a key to this game, but establishing Ryan inside, certainly a key as well, and you've seen it. Three pointers opening up for other players around the floor. And he does, Declan does a great job getting to his spots on the floor. Never delays, runs the court well in transition, gets to his spots early, establishes positions. He's going to you know, call for a double team there and open up an outside shot there. Crusaders leading big right now. And there on the screen, you just saw head coach Kyle Husband, his 18th season as head coach of this Crusaders program. Their last championship came in 2016 as part of back-to-back -back titles as Canisius takes it away. In transition, Conroy, good ball fake. In the finish. Canisius is rolling. <laughs> 17 point lead now for the Crusaders. Ward in the lane, no good. Conroy on the rebound. Since coming into the game, Conroy has had his fingerprints literally all over the basketball. And that's what type of player Vinny Conroy is. He comes off the bench, brings energy, typically defensively. You know, offensively, he's just an extra point right now for him. Sircone, offensive foul, Waylon, you see it in there, just his gritty nature, sacrificing the body, sensing his team needing a big play, whether it come on the offensive end or defensive end, and that's what all-star players do. Tommy Waylon sliding in there to take the charge. Hopefully for the Rams and coach Brian Downey, this is the, that was the possession they need to get this offensive start. Swarming defense from Kinesis, and that one knocked away by Connor Schuster. 
as Ryan checking back into the game as Gronto will take a break and Waylon having a brief discussion with the official underneath. This has been a physical game early, but Canisius doing a nice job sensing how this game's going to be called and, and playing it accordingly, something we discussed during our pregame conversation. And Fordham, every call right now, Fordham Prep is distracted looking at the officials like they're going to change their mind. We've been in those situations as coaches, and you just got to keep them focused on what they can control, and the officials you cannot control. And the home team determined by the winner of the Class A semifinal is an offensive foul there. Boateng wildly to the rim, and it looked like Cosgrove was in there to take the charge? I think it was Vinnie Conroy. And that's, Conroy, again Conroy, Yeah, my that's, goodness. That's what Vinnie Conroy brings off the bench for Kanisha. Yes, and you see it there on the replay. Vinnie Conroy, that's what you need to do as a man off the bench, coach. Vinnie Conroy proving why he's so valuable to this Crusaders team. So 440 remaining in this first half. Cosgrove can't get the easy finish, and now Fordham Prep will look to run in transition. Ward to the rim, foul. He'll head to the line, and is that something the Rams need to look to do here? Just manufacture some transition opportunities when it's not going for you in the half court. Do you look to speed things up a little bit? You have to look for any opportunity to score right now. Transition's one of them, getting, getting all five guys to run in transition, but also Ford and Prep does a good job getting to the basket, but they got to look to make the extra pass. It can't be what I call all or nothing. It can't be just rim runs to the basket and not drive and kick, because Canisius is going to have help there. Ford converts on the first free throw. A couple of lefties on this Ford and Prep team, Charlie O'Sullivan and Nathan Botang, both of whom can shoot it. As Ward cuts it to a 15 point Canisius lead here, we are nearing the midpoint here in the second quarter. Cosgrove, some nifty ball handling there into the corner. Good, Connor Schuster! The Crusaders are on fire here in the first half. Whalen looking for the backdoor cut. Schuster was there on the defense, and now Harris with it. Skipping it to Boateng along the baseline, closed off by Ryan. Boy, the Rams just seem out of sorts right now. Well, Canisius is locked in defensively like you see now, and they're knocking down threes. They're almost unbeatable. 18-point lead for the Crusaders. It's been all Canisius here in the early going. You've yet to see Ryan heat up from the outside, but believe you me, it's coming. Tipped away by Harris, Ryan collects it, foul. He'll head to the line for two shots. Ford and Preps gotta think about doing something differently on defense here. Ryan's getting the ball way too close to the basket. He's either gonna score or end up where he is now at the free throw line. Something motivating this Canisius team the last time around where they really had an opportunity to make it this far in the postseason. They had their season cut short. And Shane Sircone's freshman season two seasons ago, a couple of these senior sophomore season. So the season cut short and, and missing the year last year is certainly a motivating factor for these kids as I'm sure that you experience with your own team. Ward stops and pops from the elbow, but is that something you sense from your own players this year, just that, that reinvigoration, being able to get back on the floor and, and, and play it out and have a chance to go for a state title? Well, one thing the pandemic did and everything going on right now is you can't take anything for granted, and that's something we always try to tell our kids. You only have so much time in high school, but especially the last couple years, missing out on some state playoffs and some other games that you would normally get. You can't take it for granted. And Fordham Prep did not just sit by the wayside as their season was taken from them this past year as Cosgrove, a contested finish inside, and Canisius really has it going here in the first half, but 
as I was saying about Fordham Prep after their season was canceled last year completely, they went on to play in a five game scrimmage season Try to salvage some sort of competitive nature out of the winter campaign this past year. And they played up a division against class AA opponents and coach Brian Downey really credited that stretch with helping them reach this point. As Harris inside off the out of bounds play, Ward doing a nice job finding him. Gordon Prep needs a stop here. Fordham Prep, no stranger to sizable deficits. They started that loss to Nazareth, or that win over Nazareth, excuse me, with a 10-0 deficit. So they know how to work their way back. They don't get flustered, although it's a bit more sizable now as the official trying to split up Harris and Ryan there underneath. Cosgrove into the lane, fading away. Around the rim and out. Rebound goes to Harris. So, Coach, if you're Coach Downey facing an 18-point deficit here in the first half, what are some of the things, the, some of the buzzwords, what are you preaching to your players during timeouts and in between quarters? Well, almost every coach has probably been in this situation, and we got to get the kids to focus on one possession at a time. There's no 18-point baskets. Inside, finish from Charlie O'Sullivan. We only go twos and threes, and... Once in a while, a four-point play on a foul from three, but one possession at a time. Don't even pay attention to the scoreboard at this point. And this team has proven that they're as steady as they come, and the Rams faithful, hoping that proves to be the case over the final 17 and a half minutes of play. 120 remaining here in the second quarter. Rams down by 16. Canisius has had things going here. Rams wanted the offensive foul there. No call. Gronto steps back and knocks it down as head coach Brian Downey in the ear of the official on the near side nearest the Rams bench. What would you think on that call, coach? Looks like a little bit of a push-off there. Tough to see from here as a coach. I want the, the push-off, especially get my guys motivated if I'm Ford and Prep. A timeout called by Canisius. One minute to go here in the second quarter. It's up to a 19-point Crusaders lead. This is a Crusaders team that they're looking to win their 15th straight game, 22-5 on the season, unbeaten in league play in the Monsignor Martin League, 12-0. Coach, it was a pretty even league this year in the Monsignor Martin, except for Canisius. <laughs> yeah, everybody else pretty much split with each other, and uh, Canisius was at the top by themselves, and we're seeing why in the first half they stood that way. Yeah, defensive-minded team, and you've just seen the skill level jump off the screen all over the court. I mean, they have reserves coming off the bench with three-point shooting ability. They all play fun fundamental defense. They get back on defense. They get on the floor. I mean, everything that you really would want as a coach, this Canisius team exudes on a possession-to-possession -possession basis. Just attention to detail on both ends of the court. When you're in your 18th season as a head coach, you really have your system put into place, and that also has to help Coach Husband on a yearly basis. As players come and go, the system stays the same. Definitely the culture that's been built there. You know, kids want to go there, they want to be successful, and they give it everything they have. So Kanisha's working some clock here as Five seconds separate the game clock and the shot clock. That one taken away by Fordham Prep. Shot clock is off now. 21 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And a foul there called against the Crusaders. As Schuster didn't give Ward really enough room to turn. Ooh. Looked like kind of a stiff arm there, but the Rams getting the benefit of that call. 19-point lead for Canisius as Ward will look to cut into a sizable deficit here. We'd like to give a quick programming note. We'll have head coach Kyle Husband of the Canisius Crusaders at halftime with our own John Guarino. So be sure to stay tuned for some thoughts from Coach Husband as Ryan stops tops from the free throw line for good measure here in the first half. Canisius, boy, oh boy, they are on fire. Ward off the mark. 
And that will do it for the second quarter. Canisius with a 19 point lead, 41 to 22 over Fordham Prep. We send it down to courtside in just a few moments here to our own John Guarino, who's chasing down head coach Kyle Husband. These coaches really get into the locker room quickly at halftime, so John showing some athleticism in his own right, corralling Coach Husband for us here at center court. So we're gonna send it down here to John Guarino for the Varsity Media Sports Network. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Give me your thoughts on the first half. I mean, our defensive intensity and focus is absolutely terrific, and when we make that kind of uh, perimeter shots, we're really tough to beat on the offensive end. Any uh, messages you're going to give the kids in the locker room? Zero, zero. We got play for the half just like that. All right, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. As he said there in his final response, he said the game's zero, zero, and you really have to preach to the kids that that's how you have to play the second half. The same way you started that first half, you have to play the second half. And But sometimes with this sizable of a lead, I'm sure that can be difficult for a coach. Definitely. And I've had those messages several times to teams I've coached is, 19 point lead, you want to do the same thing you did that half in the second half, play the game as if it's a close game, 0-0 zero, zero to start the second half, and keep that same focus Coach Ho's been talked about to start the second half. And conversely, Coach Downey looking to get his Rams back into this game. What, what are some thoughts that you think he's going to tell his Rams in the locker room here to get them back into the swing of things? Well, you need defensive stops to open up stuff on offense. Their half-court offense hasn't been great, 22 points, not a lot in transition I can remember. And you need stops on defense, maybe a change something defensively, you know, some type of adjustment on Declan Ryan or how they're defending the perimeter shots, and that'll get their offense going in transition. All right, Alex Brasky and Tony Pulverenti for the Varsity Media Sports Network. 41-22, Canisius leading Fordham Prep in the New York State CHSAA championship game. We'll be right back after a short break here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Varsity Media is the tri-state area sports leader. We offer an array of services for any team, coach, player, athletic director, and parent. From game film to live streaming, we are available to cover your event anytime, any place. Looking for an enhanced experience? How about a professional broadcast with multiple camera angles, announcers, graphics, and instant replay? Need a highlight reel? We produce individual highlights for college recruiting and team highlight videos for end of season banquets. And when it comes to social media, nobody has you covered better than us. Hype videos, sideline highlights. We can tailor custom videos to make your team stand out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Why waste your time dealing with anyone else? When it comes to sports video, Varsity Media stands alone. Contact us at 516 516- 403-2050 or online at varsitymedia.net. Are you settling for a boring live stream? Can't see the players' uniforms? No audio? Camera not following the action? Consider a live stream broadcast with Varsity Media. Our announcers help tell the story of your game. Oh, it's it's bubble. He's got up. Oh, he's in. Touchdown, Farmingdale. We feature multiple camera angles, guaranteed to capture all the action. Touchdown, Oceanside. Plus added features like graphics, instant replay. Yeah, the shooters are going to shoot here at Beth Page. <laughs> One of many threes on the day. Interviews and more. It's your time to shine. And with Varsity Media, now you can. Contact us today and book a live stream broadcast with Varsity Media online at varsitymedia.net or by phone 516-403-2050. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. 
Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd. We'll help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. It's time to get hyped with Varsity Media. We offer an array of video services sure to amp up your team. From stage preseason hype videos with custom lighting and smoke machines to sideline highlights of a big game. How can your team stand out from the crowd? Contact Varsity Media today and let us tailor something your squad will never forget. These are the best times of your life. Capture them in the most creative ways possible with the sports leader, Varsity Media. Arjula, over the middle, he's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Going long, wide open, Perazzi. He gets it. Perazzi, foot raise, and five. Make it. Touchdown. Punch, power punch. Trickery, Ryder gets it back, goes over the top for Haberman. What a catch! Just Ross Simmons strips him, that's loose, and Ross Simmons is gonna take this the other direction. Make it! Touchdown! Touchdown, East! As the season winds down, don't let the memories fade. Let Varsity Media relive the season filled with great plays, exhilaration, and joy with a highlight video. For the athletes going to college, Varsity Media's recruiting videos have been the engine that drives the application to the coach. Our history has shown a Varsity Media recruiting video has saved parents hundreds of thousands of dollars. For the athletes not yet ready for college, a Varsity Media highlight video will be remembered forever and the highlights will be there for life. An end of season team highlight video will capture a successful season filled with hard work, unpredictability, a testament to the administration and athletes. Call Varsity Media today to start creating a video filled with highlights that will forever be watched. Contact us at 516-403-2050. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. There he goes for Sean Baker. One man to beat. Collier can't get him. Baker, give Victor the lead. Headed by McCoy, and in, they score! The Braves get it back, quick shot, and score for San Diego! Right up is Perazzi, he gets it, touchdown to McQuay! Punch, power punch! Out of the shot, and a goal! Dribble handoff, two shatters! What do you think? Bang! The Braves have it, let's see, they shoot it, score! Hello everybody and welcome back to Erie Community College, the site of this afternoon's New York State CHSAA Class A Championship. It's turned into a blowout here in the first half. Canisius with a 19 point lead over Fordham Prep, 41 to 22 at the half. Alex Brasky and coach Tony Polverenti, the Cardinal O'Hara head coach here in Buffalo, here for the Varsity Media Sports Network. We were expecting a competitive game. It's turned out to not be the case, but it could always change. Basketball is a funny game. It's a game of runs. What do you expect here from the second half from the Rams out of the locker room to help get themselves back into the swing of things here? Hopefully they bring the energy they didn't have to start the game. It looks like with the possession era, it looks like they start the half with the ball. And as a coach, I'm telling my guys to build off one possession at a time, build off 
little small battles throughout the game to get us back in there and try to set try to set a goal going in the fourth quarter. Let's get it under 10, something like that. And for Canisius, what what's the goal to maintain the lead? What do you think Kyle Husband told his team in the halftime locker room? Maybe one point of emphasis to help them maintain this lead. Well, it's probably like a pat on the back, but like you mentioned, you know, we got another half to play and uh, keep up what you did that first half to get you this lead. So Shane Sircone leads all scores with 13 points for Canisius. Declan Ryan with 12 points for the Crusaders. Tommy Whalen leads Fordham Prep with six points, as does Amari Ward. And for Fordham Prep and a team that has relied on Ward's contributions, both scoring and distributing, they need that senior to get going, but as you see Canisius coming out and face guarding him with Gronto, that's really gonna be a tall task. They're gonna have to work to get him open. Screen for him, he's gonna have to move without the ball and make the extra pass. Around the horn, Fordham Prep tries a deep jumper from Entrazi, no good. Harris inside, can't get the put back. He'll have another try, but the length of Ryan closes the door. Ward fading away, no good off the front iron, tipped around, Ryan corrals it, and now he's fouled on the defensive board. That's one I always call insult to injury. Get back on defense there, don't pick up that foul 94 feet from the basket. Cosgrove set to inbound for the Crusaders. Gronto, as I said before, perhaps playing out of position as the team's point guard, but he's done a nice job for Coach Husband and He's really saying his praises all season long. Pronto averages six and a half points per game, four rebounds per game, but his impact goes well beyond the stat sheet. Ryan inside with the finish, and Canisius picks up right where they left off. Looks like Fordin came out in either a matchup zone or some type of different defense, but Canisius was able to execute. Inside, Whalen. Gets the roll, and Fordham Prep with the answer. Back down to a 19-point game here, 6.30, remaining in the third quarter. Inside, Ryan working against Botang, fading away, no good. Harris tipped it around, Cosgrove came up with it, now he's fouled, he'll head to the line for two shots. Another extra possession for Canisius, that's what you have to limit if you're Fordham, you wanna get back in this game. Jacob Trotsky is second personal. And the team second. Eddie Cosgrove at the line, shooting two. So Cosgrove at the charity stripe for two shots, knocks down the first. And you said it before the game, Coach. Cosgrove, the X factor for this team. When he gets going, this team gets going. They haven't needed him much here tonight, but We've seen flashes of what Cosgrove can provide for a Class A team. He would be the best player on a lot of other teams in our area. He's the third best, or fourth maybe even with Luke Gronzo on Canisius. 21 point lead for the Crusaders now. Ward inside, strong finish. And he averages 14 and a half points per game does Ward. Only six points in the first half, but looking to get things going here in the third quarter as Canisius turns it over. Rams with it now, an extra possession. Ward knifing through defenders at the rack, turned away by Cosgrove. Ryan in transition. Give and go between Schuster and Ryan. And Canisius continuing to assert themselves here. Harris followed by Ryan as he appeared to get a little bit of the arm and Downey Coach Downey gives a little bit of a thank you on, on that call. He needs everything, anything his team can get here. As a senior, Botang has to go to the line here, catch his breath and make these two free throws. It's another player that needs to throw his hat into the ring for the Rams. Too quiet of a first half for Botang. Plenty of size inside for him to contend with, but his athleticism should be a difference maker. He can really play above the rim. You saw it on a few rebounds earlier going above that backboard pad to secure a few rebounds, but really haven't seen much from him on the offensive end. 
And maybe his focus is just too large on the defensive end trying to contain Declan Ryan. And sometimes that can be difficult for a player. You're right, Coach. That's a good point as Ryan from the wing, no good. When you come into a game knowing that you're going to have to put forth so much effort on the defensive end, you're right. That can take away from your offensive game. And Boateng inside can't get the finish there. And how do you combat that if, if you're a player or a coach? Do you take some possessions off for them on the defensive end? Do you try to rotate some players in to give them a break? How do you combat not spending too much energy on, on one end of the floor? Well, you got to look for any opportunity you can at both ends, and maybe offensively, Boateng has to finish those offensive rebounds and you know some of those baskets that are going should come easy to him. And right now, he looks out of breath. He's exhorting a bunch of effort at both ends. Yeah, certainly made an impact here tonight, has Boateng. Rebounding, defending, but this whole Fordham prep team really yet to get things going offensively. O'Sullivan from the top of the key, no good. Nice box out there from Sir Cohen on Harris. Bronto, middle of the floor now to Schuster, out of bounds off of Fordham Prep. Better job getting back in transition there for Fordham Prep. Boateng, a all-league selection in his own right. Inside, Ryan, another finish. Saw Boateng throw down a dunk in Fordham Prep's win over Nazareth, so just the athleticism overflowing for the senior forward. A rim protector as well, as we've seen, and really a humble kid when you talk to Coach Downey, the humility from Boateng, one of his more prominent characteristics. And he's an elite college basketball pro prospect. A few looks from Division I programs. And you can see why, just the ability on both ends from Nathan Boateng. As Sir Cohen on the other end, inside, no good, but he'll head to the line. Ford and Preps taking quick shots on offense, which is leading the transition for Canisius. That's a tough struggle for Ford and Prep. Trailing by so many, you really do need to get up some shots in a hurry and kind of maximize your number of possessions here. But at the same time, you can't take bad shots. You have to make sure you're taking good shots because bad shots are not going to work you back from an 18-point deficit. You need to get good looks and good spots on the floor. And I think that's the toughest part being in this position for Coach Brian Downey is to you know, try to describe what he wants on offense where you can't hold the ball, but you also got to work for a good shot. So Canisius continues to build its lead as Ward for three, and it's good. Ward trying to breathe a little bit of life into this Rams offense, cuts it down to a 20-point Crusaders advantage. 3.36 remaining in the third quarter. Fordham Prep trying to fight their way back here at ECC. Nice-looking pull-up jumper there, and that's a talent that Ward has. Definitely, and now... It Maybe that's the possession, and that's where I focus on as a coach. Maybe it's one possession that gets your team, it's mentally focused back in the game and over this hump. And early in that game against Nazareth, you saw Coach Downey do the same thing as he did there. He waited for his team to make a bucket before calling that kind of run-breaking timeout. And after they went down 10-0 against Nazareth, Ward hit a corner jumper, a beautiful fadeaway jumper from the corner. Downey called timeout, and... Everything was different from then on out. A little late in the game for that to happen here, perhaps, but certainly Rams fans hoping for signs of a similar outcome as they saw against Nazareth. Ryan in the lane, kicked it out, but he was first fouled, and now the Crusaders will have it underneath. Ford and Prep has to figure out how to stop Declan Ryan from even getting the ball that deep in the paint, and maybe it's fronting the post and having someone on the backside. Yeah, whereas Boateng, I think, has the advantage athletically, the size and girth of Ryan certainly making a difference in terms of his ability to gain position on the block and beneath the free throw line, really. He's, he's a threat to put it in anywhere inside that three, uh, free throw line with one hand. He can turn around, knock down that hook shot, so. Position key for a big man, and that girth and size from 
Ryan certainly playing a factor against Boateng. Definitely, he does a great job getting position and getting the ball in spots where he can score. He's also good from the free throw line, back to a 21 point advantage for the Crusaders. 3.15 remaining here in the third quarter. Boateng shuffled his feet. No call on the travel, and now a foul inside as Ryan, the culprit. That's his third foul. So Cosgrove will check in here as Coach Husband perhaps looking to avoid any sort of foul trouble here. And we talked about it at the half. When you have such a sizable advantage, you don't want to give any glimmer of hope to the opposing team. And if your best player gets into deep foul trouble or perhaps is disqualified from the game, that can certainly lead to a snowball effect for the other team. And Canisius is deep enough to manage this last three minutes or whatever Coach Husband wants Declan to, to sit out to avoid hit, picking up his fourth foul. So a foul in transition there. Sir Cohn was fouled as that one is going to go against Boateng, and I believe that's his fourth it is. So Boateng with four fouls now. And a sub coming on for him, perhaps. And yes, Jake and Trazi back into the game for the Rams. Boateng will take a break as he's one foul away from being disqualified here and perhaps playing his, or no, playing his final game as a high school basketball player. There's no federation tournament this year. And that one bounced off the baseline, and we're going the other way. Does that change things in this game too, knowing that there's nowhere to go beyond this for these? Do you sell out even more perhaps? I know that you may not have been in this position yourself, but imagining what it would be like knowing that there's no federation tournament as there was when you won it in 2019, does that change the mentality, do you think, entering this game for Canisius or Fordham Prep? I'm not sure it does. Uh, your seniors, you know, as a senior, you, you want to always win your last game get as far as you can. So both teams are in a position, this is as far, win or lose today, this is as far as they can get. Um, so as a senior, I'm just looking at the big picture of, you wanna win your last game, no matter what that means, if that's the Federation Tournament, or if that's the Catholic Championship like today. Now how disappointing is, is that, do you think, for these guys, knowing that they're not gonna be able to move on and, and play for that Federation title as, as you did in 2019, in Glens Falls, against Glens Falls, you talked to me about that environment, thousands of people in that gym, just the, the energy that, that high level New York State basketball creates. How much do you think these guys are, are devastated that they're not gonna be able to move on and, and play in that Federation tournament? Well, especially a team like Canisius who has everything it needs to compete in that Federation tournament and possibly win a Federation championship. So uh, it's gotta be disappointing for a team like, especially the way they're playing today. You know, they're really dominating this game. Yeah, this is a game in other years you would look at as coach husband and be like, we're playing our best basketball right at the right time. The way that they came out here as inside and Trazi gets the finish for Fordham Prep to cut it back down to a 19 point Canisius lead with 227 remaining in the third. But typically if you were coach husband, you'd, you'd say this is exactly where I want my team to be heading into the Federation tournament. 100%. They're uh, I believe we talked about 14 game win streak entering tonight and this would be 15 and that's probably the worst feeling is when your team's playing at its best and they can't still compete. So although we're talking about it like it's a formality that Canisius will win this game, they have controlled it throughout. They do lead by 20 in the third quarter but as we said before, it's a funny game this game of basketball and Earlier this season for you, Coach, you saw something that you had never seen before. Your team, 19 straight points. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So, yeah, I mean, the game's really unpredictable, and that's that's why you got to keep your players focused. You never know what's going to happen. you just got to focus on one possession at a time. Anything's possible. And when your team scored those 19 straight points, that was coming back from a sizable deficit, if I'm not mistaken. We were down 15 and a um, couple adjustments defensively, and one on a 19-0 run. It was a nice win versus, versus St. Mary's who just won the Class B title. So not against any slouch either. So this game of basketball, when you have teams at this level playing this late into the season, anything could happen. 
as Anyinye Akankwo undercuts Sir Cohn there. And that's going to send the junior forward to the line for one and one here. So Akankwo on for the first time for Fordham Prep, one of Fordham's best athletes, says Coach Brian Downey. And his length really makes him a tough defender. Akankwo just a junior, so a bright future for this Rams basketball program as they look forward to take the momentum built this season and two seasons ago, both championship seasons for the Rams, they look to take that momentum forward into the future. Three ball, Charlie O'Sullivan. Excuse me. Who was that, coach? My apologies. I, I lost track here looking down at my stat sheet. In Grando. O'Sullivan, of course, on Fordham Prep. In Grando. The three for Canisius. Now in transition, the Crusaders. Grando tries the inside finish, no good. That one rejected by Unconquo, and you see the link there. He knocked it away from Sir Cohn. My apologies on that last three. Looking down at my info sheet, the three ball from Lucas in Grando, getting the fans re-energized here in a 24-point game. In Grando, a sub off the bench, likely doesn't get many opportunities to knock down three-pointers, but he can certainly knock them down when given the opportunity, as we saw there. You see even Canisius' players off the bench are coming in and producing. They haven't skipped a beat since going to their bench. or haven't. They've actually increased their lead since Declan Ryan went to the bench, picking up his third foul. Crusaders are the at the line, So Grotto at the line now. First one rims out. And don't discount the impact that Gronto has had on this game. His defense provided on Ward and off the ball as well. Sir Cohn inside. But well, look at him. Right after the ball goes into the basket, Gronto is there to face guard Ward, and there's no secret why Ward has had a quiet afternoon. And like Coach Husband said, you know, Luke Gronto came over as a transfer this year, and he came from a program where he was relied upon to score a lot, and he comes into a role now where he's a defender, and he's a ball handler. Bacconi once again, is this one Incredibly lopsided here at ECC as Canisius. No sign of slowing down. That one taken away by Whalen. At the rim, Whalen around the rim, no finish. Ward on the putback, rejected by Cosgrove. A third try for the Rams here. And Ward eventually gets it to go. Coach Downey wanted to foul there on a few of those missed opportunities from Fordham. Three seconds on the game clock. Sircon from the corner. Cosgrove on the putback. Nobody there to box him out. And Canisius heads into the fourth quarter with a 28-point lead. My goodness gracious, what a performance here from the Crusaders. They've done it all on both ends of the floor here this afternoon. And that's one thing Canisius is known for. Their third quarter is their quarter. If you can track their box scores from this season and prior season, the third quarter, whatever Coach Husband tells them at halftime, they come out and they lay the knockout punch normally, and that's what we see today. Look at that student section from Canisius. They brought the energy all afternoon long. They've willed their team to what's been a phenomenal performance here in the New York State. CHSAA Class A Championship game. Alex Brasky and coach Tony. <laughs> Excuse me, coach. It, it had a brain fart. Co Tony Pulverenti. Me and a little behind the scenes here. Me and coach meeting for the first time here today. Couldn't tell by the chemistry we've had. I think it's gone very well. I've had a great time calling the game with you here 
this afternoon, Coach. And you, you know this Canisius team so well and, and, and this environment here. Is this what high school basketball is all about? I am not well versed in this Catholic league, but, but you, meeting you and discussing things with you pregame for the first time and getting a feel and now seeing it firsthand, is this environment and this game, this is what it's all about, isn't it? 100%, and I'm glad we're back to this point after the last couple of years the way it's been. When we came back from the, the COVID pandemic and the pause, we had no fans in the crowds, and now to have this type of crowd here to witness this is great. Ryan inside, couldn't get the finish. So sorry about that, Coach. Tony Pulverenti. I said it like 10 times before, but sometimes when you're calling out a bunch of names, as you know, a little difficult. As Ryan from the free throw line knocks one down. Kanisha's like a runaway train now. Just cannot be stopped. Full steam ahead to this championship victory, what seems like it will eventually be a championship victory with 7.48 here remaining in the fourth quarter. And Canisius, their student section, already with the start, the buses chant as an offensive foul called there on Coach Downey, flabbergasted once again with that call. Vinnie Conroy again, second charge of the game. Came in off the bench. Doing his job. He's really had a strong game as Conroy. Checking back in for the Rams, number 11, Jacob Trotty. So here comes the Crusaders now. Circone in transition. Can't get the finish. Ryan tried the putback. And a foul underneath on the rebound. It's a 30 point game now. The Rams will take over possession. Really playing for pride now are the Rams. And how does the mentality change when, when that's the case? When you see yourself facing a 30 point deficit, time winding down in the fourth quarter, some of these seniors perhaps playing or I keep saying that, yes, playing their final game here as Wayland inside. Does the mentality change here, playing for pride as opposed to playing for that victory? Well, you hope it doesn't. And then, you you know, Fordham Prep has some juniors and one sophomore that this is valuable experience, experience for them moving forward. Ward in transition has it taken away. Stepped out of bounds on the baseline and Canisius is going to take over now. Schuster back into the game for Canisius. You see Ryan take a well-deserved break. Fordham applying a little bit of pressure here. Conroy. Now Cosgrove in the paint. He gets the finish. And it looks like Canisius did take Coach Kyle Husband's advice and their mentality coming into the second half was the game was 0-0 because zero zero they're just putting their floor to the pedal right now. A little inside out, a Conquo for three, no good. So Cohen on the rebound. Just looking to salt this one away, and a foul there committed by Whalen with 6.15 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And he's just faithful, still on its feet. Their effort tonight has been as impressive as the Crusaders on the floor. Conroy knocks down the free throw. Two for two for Vinny Conroy. Ryan looking to check back in for Canisius now. 
Inside, Boateng to Okonkwo, but a little bit of an errant pass off the fingertips. Canisius in transition, no good. And Trazi on the rebound. Ward. Over to Whalen, and he traveled. Ryan checking back in. Schuster checking out. As the Crusaders look to put the finishing touches on what will be their first state championship victory since 2016. Ryan at the free throw line. Ward now for the Rams. Nice Euro step to get past Granto and the Rams trying to forge a little late push here. And you like to see Ford and Prep still with some intensity on defense despite the margin of score here. Good timeout called there by the Crusaders, a 30 second timeout. Here at ECC, 5.07 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's a 30 point lead for Canisius. You see Coach Husband talk things over with his group. Canisius has led this one pillar to post. Fordham with the first points of the game, but Canisius quickly responded, took the lead, and that lead has grown minute by minute ever since. So a quick behind the scenes, we'd like to thank our broadcast crew here, John Guarino, Chris Van Campen, and Joel Belthazer here on the Varsity Media Sports Network, along with myself, Alex Brasky, and Coach Tony Polverenti. A fun time here this afternoon. It's been a little bit of a lopsided contest, but high level basketball on display here in Buffalo, New York. Can't beat it. And there's not too many games left, so enjoy every one we get. Cosgrove with it on the wing, guarded closely by Entrazi. Now Ryan thought about the jumper, pulled it down, put it back up. No good. Cosgrove on the rebound and the putback. <laughs> Kanish is still playing this game like it's close. Every possession, attention to detail, effort at both ends. Ward trying to get a little bit of room from Ronto, but unable to do so. Whalen, beautiful spin move down the lane. Goes down, he wanted the foul call to no avail. Now Cosgrove in transition, Ward takes it away, the save, but he throws it out of bounds. It will stay with the Crusaders. Good hustle there by the senior. Cosgrove, wing three, no good. Cone on the rebound and the putback. So as we said before, Sircone, multiple offers from Division I teams, Albany and Fairfield, a big, strong, athletic player, and he's going to have plenty of basketball left in him after his senior season next season at perhaps the Division I level. And you see why the coaches like him. You see his high motor at both ends of the court, especially the way he offensive rebounds. You know, he goes after every offensive rebound, gets a lot of them, scores a lot of them. You saw on the far sideline there, Jake Entrazi checking out perhaps for the final time in his high school career as Coach Downey. A warm reception there for the senior forward. And Entrazi has some basketball lineage. Ty, Jer Ty Jerome, a former player for Iona, now on the Oklahoma City Thunder, is Jake Entrazi's first cousin. And something that runs in that family, just a workhorse mentality. It's been tough to get Entrazi out of the gym over the years. And you know as a coach, that's, that's what you look for in a player, that gym mentality. 100%. Looks like Boateng's checking out for the last time in his career. Boateng, that senior forward for Fordham Prep. Also an elite level college basketball prospect. 
This will be his final high school game. Just a humble kid through and through is Boateng. One of the nicest kids you'll come across, the team player. He's somebody that Coach Downey has loved to coach. And you need those alpha dog mentalities, Coach, when you want to win championships. But you also need those guys that are willing to not take a back seat, but maybe take a back seat in terms of the emotion and stuff like that as we see Ward. Perhaps somebody's taken a back seat to in that regard just due to Ward's impressive play. But you really need all sorts of personalities to make a team, don't you? Definitely, and you, the number one thing you need is leadership. Leadership's hard to find amongst teenagers, but when you find it, your team's going to be really successful. And Ward has really come a long way as a high school basketball player. Initially, really just a slasher, somebody who got to the rim, penetrated and pitched to shooters, but has since developed that perimeter shooting game. And that's really just a credit to his hard work and dedication to the game that he loves. And he's really vaulted this, helped vault this Fordham prep team to great things. Their first championship since 1933, a few years ago. And after missing a season, they followed it up with another championship this season and wore it a huge part of that. And Tommy Whalen as well, who checks out for the last time in his high school career. And Whalen just described, we've said it numerous times, but you can't say it enough, really. Just a tough kid, born in the Bronx. Really has that city mentality, that blue collar game that he's displayed here tonight on both ends. It hasn't gone the way that the Rams have wanted it to go, but they certainly haven't lacked effort here tonight. Maybe didn't match the energy of Canisius in the early going, but their effort has been there. They've been hustling after loose balls. They've been defending. They've been going after rebounds. It just, Canisius, a, a runaway train, as I said. And that's the one thing as a coach in these situations with the deficit you're facing, you want to see out of your players is them not giving up, physically or mentally. And saving loose balls and getting after it defensively here, still down a bunch, you know, that's good to see. Ryan along the lane line gets the finish. As we said about Ryan, he will attend Wooster Academy Prep School next year. Looking to perhaps advance himself and get some better looks from prospective colleges. And what do you think he has to do at that level to perhaps get those looks that he's he's in search of? Uh, I would say is you know physical conditioning, strength, that kind of stuff that, that you can really focus on postgraduate of high school. You know, in high school, it's, it's a lot different after high school when you have the time and you have strength and conditioning coaches. Now you see here the Crusaders emptying the bench. Sir Cone off. Ryan off. Schuster off. Ronto off. Receiving a warm reception from the large contingent of Canisius fans here at Erie Community College. As you've seen, as you see Dang Door, Nathan Leonard, Coach Akwe into the game. Also, you saw there the three ball from Johnny Esposito. And also Pat Benzer into the game for the Crusaders. Great to see these guys get to play in a cha state championship game. A lot of these guys don't get many minutes during the season. They're at practice every day, working as hard as they can. It pays off. Conquo couldn't get the finish there. Another new player on, this time for the Rams, Peter Meyer, a senior guard. There you see defending the ball in the backcourt. Couldn't get the finish on offense. Also into the game, J.P. Denfield, a senior forward. He's just described Denfield. He didn't get a lot of minutes here tonight, but as you see there on the defensive glass, just a workhorse was Denfield, Denfield for the Rams this year. Coach Downey just described him as one word, animal. <laughs> so we want to remind you coming up at the end of this game we will have an interview with our player of the game and we're going to talk with Declan Ryan the senior forward for this Crusaders team. A great game here tonight, a great career for Canisius as he moves on to bigger and brighter things in the future. A 
Somebody else who we didn't talk perhaps enough about tonight, Connor Schuster, kind of the unsung hero for this Canisius team. An unsung defender, really guards for 32 minutes and will run through a wall for his teammates, and he really made a difference tonight too. He's the fifth starter. Like you said, he kind of gets overshadowed by the other four guys, but he's just as important. 15 seconds to go in this New York State CHSAA Class A State Championship. Eight seconds remaining. Canisius. They can taste it. Their fans on their feet. The Crusaders are Class A champions. Canisius with an 85 to 49 victory over the Fordham Prep Rams here at Erie Community College. A wire to wire victory. Impressive performance here from Canisius. And they take home some hardware. Class A champions and CHSAA. It's been an exciting time. We're not yet done here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We'll take a quick break before our player of the game interview with Canisius forward Declan Ryan. Yeah, 
Varsity Media is the tri-state area sports leader. We offer an array of services for any team, coach, player, athletic director, and parent. From game film to live streaming, we are available to cover your event anytime, any place. Looking for an enhanced experience? How about a professional broadcast with multiple camera angles, announcers, graphics, and instant replay? Need a highlight reel? We produce individual highlights for college recruiting and team highlight videos for end of season banquets. And when it comes to social media, nobody has you covered better than us. Hype videos, sideline highlights. We can tailor custom videos to make your team stand out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Why waste your time dealing with anyone else? When it comes to sports video, Varsity Media stands alone. Contact us at 516 403 2050 or online at varsitymedia.net. All right, Alex Brasky here with Canisius, senior forward and state champion Declan Ryan. Declan, what a performance from you and your team here this afternoon at ECC. How does it feel to be a state champ? It feels amazing. We've been, I've been saying since freshman year that we've wanted to get here and beginning this season after losing in the semifinals of Monsignor Martin, we've been saying this is our year and we just showed it, so it just feels amazing. Now, you limited their star player, Omari Ward, to six points in the first half. What did you do defensively that made it such a difficult afternoon for their senior point guard? I think Luke Granto just like locked in on him and when our coach was saying that we need to get in help and Granto needed to lock in on defense and that was the main thing. Just Granto played amazing defense for the whole entire first half. Now you created that presence inside offensively that really stood the course of the entire game and was a major factor in your win. What allowed you to create that presence inside and get things going offensively inside the paint? I think it was just like being able to get it and get, where, like, get to my spots and get the ball there because then they, when they came over and helped, I was able to pass out, and then after a while, I was able to get my buckets out of that because I would pass fake and then get to the rim there. So that's Now you hold Fordham prep to 49 points in the state championship game. Is that Kanisha's defense? Yes, it is. Coach has been saying all year we went on defense, so that, that's just how we wanted to play the whole time. Now, final question. We know that you can't move on to the Federation tournament. But as a senior, to end your career with a state championship victory, is there anything more, perhaps the Federation, but is there anything more that you could have asked for to end your career as a, as a champion? I don't think so. This has been my dream since freshman year, and our whole team has been talking about it the whole entire year, so this just feels amazing. 
All right, Declan Ryan, senior forward for the Canisius Crusaders, state champions in Class A. Thanks, Declan. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Alex Brasky for the Varsity Media Sports Network. Great game here at Erie Community College for Crusaders fans. Not so much for Rams fans, but the conclusion of a fantastic season in the Class A state championship game. Crusaders champions and Rams will look, at, look to do it again next season. So Alex Brasky, for all of our friends here on the Varsity Media Sports Network, Coach Tony Perverenti, John Guarino, Chris Van Campen, and Joel Belthazer, I'd like to sign off and say to you, we'll see you next time. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd. We'll help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video.